Hello there, how you doing? Welcome back. Now today I would like to, uh, in a very similar vein to a previous video I made dedicated to David Bowie, I would very much like to dedicate today to Kurt Cobain. One of, in my opinion, the most influential artists of all time, both on his own and at the same time within the context of his band. And someone who I don't think anyone would challenge me on this, in my opinion, single-handedly marked an entire decade in popular culture. And when I was thinking as to what to dedicate today to, really, I couldn't come up with a more appropriate topic. You see, when I think of Kurt Cobain, what really sticks with me is a core lesson and a core belief that everyone's voice deserves to be heard. Even if you do it under a veil of angst, or you do it under a veil of anti-establishmentism, your opinion doesn't need to be popular in order to deserve recognition or to be heard in the general scheme. And the pure attitude that this man alongside his band just portrayed, put forth and embodied really in almost every sense of the word is something that we can call back on today and really see how much it impacted everyone, not just within the field of arts. You don't need to be a musician, you don't need to be an artist, you don't need to be a photographer or a filmmaker to have an opinion and to have the courage to voice it. Just a side note, while we have a quick break here, I would like to uh, just have a second point out that uh, we have officially reached 100 subscribers. I'm not going to waste too much time talking about it, but I just wanted to put a quick thank you in the middle of the video, make sure everyone saw it, and remind you, if you've enjoyed what I've said so far, please consider subscribing down below. Support's been amazing, and um, yeah, more on that later. Kurt Cobain, musically, in my opinion, had such a unique method of expression. There was just that signature sound that even if I play it today, I can sort of recognize it which I can't really put to words in a way, but it's so elegant in its simplicity, whilst at the same time, from a musical perspective, not perhaps being the most refined and clear cut sound or melody that you could possibly come up with, but there was just that innominate element characterizing it, which made everyone fall in love with his music. And frankly, I'm of the belief that the simplicity of his songs is one of the reasons why Nirvana as a band is so universal. You see almost everyone and their dog equipped with a Nirvana t-shirt, and, and it's not because everyone's trying to pretend like they're being cool, it's because it's good fucking music. It's simple, it's, it's easy to get behind, it's something that the mind doesn't have to struggle to understand, and at the base of it, there is a core lyricism which expresses feelings which we all have, and puts itself at the forefront of a, f a feeling of insatisfaction, and in some instances of, of pure despair with regards to a system which sometimes feels truly oppressing. And at the end of the day, what I take away every time is that it's fucking okay to protest. It's okay to say things aren't how they should be. And this is one of my great takeaways from this band and this musician. <laughs> Now, I didn't really want to boil down uh, today's discussion into, uh, let's say, a list of songs that I liked from the Nirvana library, because if I wanted to do that, I could just redirect you to the 1993-1994 MTV Unplugged performance, and you'd have everything you need right there. But I have chosen, sprinkled in as we've gone along here in the video, to uh, play on my acoustic one of my favorite favorite songs uh, thought first conceptualized by Lead Belly and then replayed by Kirk Bain in this occasion with his ensemble which is Where Did You Sleep Last Night? A song which 
in my opinion, doesn't really get as much recognition as it should. You see, when we think of great guitar covers, the first example that comes to my mind, for example, is All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix, which obviously is a cover of Bob Dylan's song, which in the wide jargon of popular culture at this point is so emblematic with Jimi Hendrix's playing style, he transformed it to the point where the song really is taken on an entirely new identity of its own, and we now blatantly associate with Jimi, even though he wasn't the person to come up with it. I think, maybe not to this extent, musically speaking, but from, from a sentimental perspective, the transparency and the expressivity which comes as a result of this transparency and, and really honesty in the way that he sings and the way that he played really makes this specific cover a whole new beast of its own and is really one of my favourite pieces by Nirvana. Now I do want to keep things relatively light-hearted today because that's the spirit that I would like to approach these topics with at the end of the day, very much like when I spoke of David Bowie once before. But I will allow myself this one digression. I mentioned this transparency, I mentioned this, this expressivity which is normally wrapped in an angsty anti-establishmentism, anti yeah, it's a really hard word to say, which we sort of pin the Kurt Cobain sound to. But at the end of the day, but I just want to point out that this is one of the things that we unfortunately gloss over the most. Given that it's very hard to start talking artistic interpretation, and given that it's very hard to start talking sound technique, which some people would say it's not there, but that's for another day. The one thing that always really struck me in my favourite Nirvana songs, some of which, I've, again, I've played scattered throughout, is the fact that, in my opinion, artistically, Kurt Cobain is just transparent. He's unfiltered, and what he expresses is really what's there at its core. And in 2021, it, it's, it's especially refreshing to look back on this type of sound, given all the current trends and given all the current pre-production, post-production techniques that we can all use. At the end of the day, I think it's really important also to just highlight that there is some profound artistic beauty to come in imperfections, to come in just letting an artist do their thing as their gut steers them in making it. That to me is one of the most difficult elements of being a musician and frankly one of the things that in my opinion deserves a lot of credit and a lot of attention. So I hope for any of you out there as well who maybe didn't look back on the catalogue of Kurt Cobain as fondly as I do, perhaps you may see him in a different light as a result of my observations today. And now, I'm fully aware that many people out there would always point out that, that Kurt Cobain wasn't an extraordinary guitar player, or he wasn't an extraordinary singer in his own right, from a technical perspective. That being said, thank you very much for tuning in today. I'd say that's a good point to leave the video on today. And as painful as it is in a way to have to reminisce on all these magnificent artists, I find that it's absolutely necessary to remember all those things that made these artists unique as they were, and to recall fondly as to how they impacted all of us in our own musical career, and looking on into how we can improve and learn from what they taught us. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for tuning in. But before we pop off, I, I will quickly acknowledge that um, we have finally hit uh, 100 subscribers here on the channel, and uh, it's a very humbling moment indeed. Now, I don't want to go on too massive of the spiel with that regard because it's not the time or the place, but do trust me, something soon is going to come about, and I am for sure appreciative of all the support that's been coming about lately, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, that's me. I'll be going, and um, do remember, stay classy, my internet people.